to Psalms 91. I'm telling you right now, this ain't nothing but God. Because when, when First Lady opened the book, I'm like, wow. Now we're going to see where this goes. Because to be honest with you, I didn't know what I was going to preach today. I told First Lady that. But then the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and deal with me in such a way that he was dropping it so fast. I was just like, Lord, you're going to have to slow down a little bit. You go. You're giving me too much too fast, but God is good. And he led me just last night to Psalms 91. And he showed me something, and he told me, I want you to preach this to encourage my people, because there's so many people that need encouragement, especially in the season that we're in. But Psalms 91, I want to begin reading at verse number one, and I want to just deal with two particular verses in particular when you have it, so praise the Lord. And the Bible says, he who dwells in the secret place, somebody say secret place, of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In whom I will trust. I want to preach on a subject this morning. Shelter in place. Shelter in place. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Shelter in place. Shelter in place. Shelter in place. Psalms 91 is a testimony of a man who made up his mind to make God his refuge. You can tell that this is someone who had made up their mind. This is someone who was totally convinced that the presence of God was totally needed in order to survive. Somehow this man had convinced himself that the presence of God was totally needed in order to survive. And judging from the literary composition, you can tell that whoever wrote this psalm was not a novice. In other words, they were not a beginner. They, was, they wasn't just somebody just, that just recently joined the church. They was not a novice, but this was somebody that had a real, authentic relationship with God. Who, whoever this was, was speaking from experience. And they knew how important it was to make the God Almighty the, their dwelling place. Yeah. This, that's why I said this was not a beginner, this was not a novice, because whoever this was had come to a conclusion yeah. that it's something about making the God Almighty their dwelling place. The Bible says here in, verse, in Psalms 91, because I want you to understand about something about Psalm 91. Psalms 91 is the safety of abiding in the presence of God. And it is the state, in other words, it is the state of the godly. Watch this now. The state of the godly is they will be protected. Yeah. Let me say this again. If you are godly, it goes on without a shadow of a doubt. You are going to be protected. And this is the state of regard. If you are godly and if you are moving and, and have your being in God, then you are guaranteed to be protected. And all you have to do is get in God, trust in God, and stay in God, and, and you will um, see the full manifestation of the promise. Watch this now. When you get in God, stay in God, and trust in God, you will see the full manifestation of the promise. I need you to understand something, that this is a promise of the Most High God. Watch this now. To anyone who dares to make him their dwelling place. Let me tell you something. This is what I love about God. It's open up to anyone 
who makes God their dwelling place. Watch it now. Because Psalm 91 is a universal promise for anyone who dares to make him their dwelling place. Watch this now. Peter said in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, Acts 10 and 34, that God is no respecter of persons. Watch this now. He said that God is not a respecter of persons. And, and one translation said God does not consider some people to be better than others. And, and this is what he goes on to say in that verse number 35. But in every nation, whoever fears him and work righteousness is accepted by him. Yeah. Another translation said he accepts anyone who worships him and do what is right. It is not important what nation they come from. So he is not a respecter of person. He don't care if you're black or white. He don't care if you're tall or short. He don't care if you're skinny or fat. He is not a respecter of person. And the Bible says here, this something that says, he who dwells. One translation said, whoever lives under the shelter. Another translation said, whoever dwells. In other words, it's a universal, it's a universal principle with a universal promise. Let me say this again. It is a universal principle with a universal promise. But all you have to do is walk in the principle and the, and the, and the promise is guaranteed. If you, he said, the psalmist is saying, if you would just line up with God, if you would just line up with his word, oh my God, he said the, the promise is guaranteed. In other words, all you have to do is shelter in place in God. All you got to do, and God will do the rest. He said, when you get in God, watch God do the rest. You, you just get in God. You, 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 all you have to do, you have to do is just get in God. You have to understand something. God is looking for someone who is willing to operate in faith. See, that's why he said there's no criteria. There's a, the, the criteria is there's a universal principle because all I need is someone that can operate in faith. It don't matter what nation you come from. If you got faith to believe in me, I can do the miraculous. I can do things that's unimaginable. But you, only thing I need is somebody to operate in faith because the Bible said in Hebrew 11 and 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. And see, what I like about God, he, 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 this thing ain't predicated on religion. This thing ain't predicated on tradition. But it's just predicated on somebody that has the audacity to believe in this almighty God. It ain't about coming to church. It ain't about looking churchy or talking churchy. But it's about having this real relationship with God. Please understand that faith in God is what separates you. Watch this now. The faith in God, faith in God is what separates you as a believer from everybody else. Let me say this again. I'm going to say this again. Faith in God, it separates you as a believer from everybody else. Watch this now. Faith in God is what brings you to be different. Let me say this again. When you see somebody that's really operating in the faith that pleases God. It brands you differently. In other words, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. You're, gonna, you're not going to blend in, but you're going to blend out because there's something about you operating in faith that brands you to be different, but you have to understand what is faith. I want to deal with faith for a moment because I want to give you the definition that God gave me and, and give you a biblical definition of what, is, what faith is. Watch this now. And I ain't going to give you the Hebrew 11 and 1 neither. Because everybody go to the Hebrews 11 and 1. But I'm going to tell you what God, the Holy Spirit, showed me about faith. He said, faith is trusting God with all your being. It's, it's trusting God with all your being. In other words, your whole existence is to completely to rely on God. Your whole existence, not just some of you, but all of you, have made up in your mind to rely upon God. Watch this now, because I need you to understand something. Everybody throughout the word of God who completely relied on God 
experience the universal pr promise of yeah. Psalms 91. Yeah. Let me say this again. Everyone throughout the word of God who completely relied on God experienced the universal principle of Psalms 91. Yeah. I'm, and I'm going to tell you right now, and, it, and then what God did for them, he said, I'm going to do it for you, but you got to operate like they operated. If he did it for the people of old, he is the same God. The Bible says, I change not. I'm the same God of yesterday as I am today. I'm going to do what I did for them. I'm going to do it for you. Watch this now. As they dwelled in the presence of God, as they dwelled in the presence of God, God watched over them and God protected them. Watch this now. From Abraham to Job, from Moses to Joshua, from David to Daniel, all these people trusted God with all their being. Watch this now. He trusted them with all their being to the point that and, and while, when they trusted God with all their being, God watched over them. God protected them. Man, I'm telling you right now, he, Job had such a relationship with God. God, Job had such a relationship with God that when Satan went to God and he asked God, God said, go ahead, try him. He said, go ahead and try him. Hit him with your best shot. And, 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 and Satan said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, there's something funny here. There is a hedge around this man. The Bible said in Job 1 and 10, have you not made a hedge all around him? All around his household? All of everything on every side, you have blessed the work of his hands and his possession have increased in the land? He said, wait a minute, man, that's a trick question because I know that you are protecting this man. One translation said you always protect him. Not some of the time. He said you always protect him, but not only him, but you protect his family and everything that he has. You have blessed him and made him successful in everything he does. And one translation said, haven't you put a protective fence around him? Yes, sir. His home, everything he has, you have blessed everything he does. Everything, everything he does. He will, you, you, you prosper in this, hit, prosper in this man. Yes, Watch this now. Because it's something about sitting in the sick, secret place of God. Yes, Let me tell you, it's something about yes, sitting in the secret place of God. Yes, Let me tell you something. Because there, there's so much substance in this psalm. The, the Bible said that, that he would, they that dwell in the secret places of God. Watch it now. Because the word dwell is the participial from the verb to sit. Watch this now. In other words, so the psalmist is saying, I need you to sit. Watch this now. Everyone who dwells. Everyone who sits in a secret place of God, everyone who operates in a universal principle receives the universal promise. He said, everybody, it, 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 it don't matter who you are, no matter if you're black or white, if you are walking in this universal principle, you will receive this universal promise. And all you have to do is sit down and dwell in the secret place of God. Watch this now. All you have to do is shelter in place and God will do the rest. Watch this now. So now the question becomes, the question becomes, what is the secret place of God? Huh? The question now, that he said, he said, he said, so the question becomes now, what is the secret place of God? Watch this now, because I want you to understand saying something, because I'm going to show you something, because God blew my mind when he began to deal with me about this. First of all, you have to understand that the secret place is a place that belongs to God. Uh -huh. It's not your hideout. It's not your secret place. The Bible says here that this is the secret place. It's a place that belongs to the Lord. The secret place is of the most high. He said the psalmist didn't say it's your secret place. He said it's the most high secret place. It's God's secret place. Watch this it ain't your friend's secret place. It ain't your secret place. But it's the secret place of the most high God. Because listen to what he says here in Psalms 91 and 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high. Yeah. Watch 
Watch this now. Because the word in Hebrew for the secret place is cedar. Watch this now. It's cedar. What it means is hiding place, covering, or protection. In other words, he said it's the cedar. It is the hiding place, the covering, or the protection. Watch this. You have to understand that the secret place, watch this now, is a cooperative a co 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 cooperative operation. It can't be seen with the naked eye. Yeah. It's a covert operation. It's a covert operation that cannot be seen, watch this now, with the naked eye. In other words, it's not openly acknowledged or displayed. Watch this. I want to say this again. It's a covert operation that cannot be seen with the natural eye. It is it's not openly acknowledged or displayed because the secret place, watch this now, is in the spiritual realm. The secret place that the summons is talking about is not a physical place, but it is a spiritual place because the secret place always occurs in the spiritual realm. It's a place of holy concealment. In other words, it's a place where God can seal you as, as a believer. And he won't let nobody touch you, nobody get to you, no sickness, no disease, no hater. No, he, it's a holy concealment only for the believers. Watch this now. It's a place of intimacy where we pour out our heart and soul unto God. That's what this secret place is. It's a place where we pour out our heart and soul to God. It's a place of prayer, intercession, and supplication. Watch this now. You go to that place for prayer, intercession, and supplication. It's a place, watch this now, of constant communication with God. Let me say this again. It is a place of constant communication with God because the secret place is the ever-present place in the spirit. Let me say this again. The secret place is the ever-present place in the spirit. You have to understand that the secret place is a lodging in the spiritual realm with God. Let me say this again. The secret place is a lodging place or a lodging in the spiritual realm with God. Watch this. Jesus said this in John 4 and 23. He said, the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Watch this. He, he said, he's seeking such to worship him. Watch this. Please understand. That true worship must come from the spiritual realm. It must come from the spirit. Watch this now. True worship must come from your spirit. Let me say it again. Not only do it come from the spiritual realm, but true worship must come from your spirit. Your spirit take play or take play in this, 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 this integral part in the worship. Watch this now. Paul said, I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. Because one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to renew your spirit to worship of the Almighty God. That's what the Holy Spirit does when, he, when we get born again, when we get saved. He comes in agreement with your spirit and he renews your spirit to worship the Almighty God. Watch it up. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some biblical evidence. Paul said, Paul said in Romans 8 and 16, he said, the Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. He said that the spirit, the, the Holy Spirit, bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. In other words, the, the Holy Spirit comes re to renew your spirit. And he's trying to position your spirit towards the worship of the true and living God. See, you can come to church and you ain't sheltered in place. You can come to church and the spirit hadn't been, your spirit hadn't been renewed toward worship towards God. One translation said the spirit itself testifies together with our spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. It assures us. And one translation said God's spirit touches our spirit and confirms who we really are, 
we know who he is yeah. and we know who he, he we are. Yeah. You're going to know who he is yeah. and you're going to know who you are yeah. in God. Yeah. Watch this now. You have to understand. You have to understand this. The criteria for dwelling in the secret place of God is, 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 is knowing God yeah. in an intimate way. Because there is a criteria, ladies and gentlemen, to get in that secret place. And that criteria is getting to know God in an intimate way. Like I said before, it's a covert operation and it cannot be seen with the naked eye. What did Paul say in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9? He said, I haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. Nor entered into the thought for what God has prepared for those who love him. He said, look, it's a, it's a covert operation. Oh, my God. It's a covert operation. And let me tell you something. Nobody can see what God is up to concerning your situation because he has did it that way. He said, I will not make it acknowledgeable. I will not display it because what I'm doing is not for the natural eye. People are trying to look and look for you to fall, but you won't fall because God said it's a covert operation. Yes, he's going through hell. Yeah, he's going through hell, but I won't let him stumble and fall. You, ain't, you don't see what I see. You don't know what I'm up to because I'm up to something for, with them. I haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither entered into the mind. You thinking this, and I'm telling you right now, it ain't going to turn out the way you think. It ain't going to turn out the way you think. She ain't going to fail. He ain't going to fail. He ain't going to lose nothing. She ain't going to lose nothing. It ain't what you think it is. Last time I checked, we serve an awesome God. Last time I checked, he's able to do anything but fail. The last time I checked, he said he's my provider and my keeper. The last time I checked, Watch this now. Watch this. What God is doing for his people cannot be seen with the naked eye. Watch this now. King Nebuchadnezzar couldn't see what God was doing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He, 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 he couldn't see it. He couldn't even understand. He couldn't possibly understand. He was just mad at them. See, Nebuchadnezzar was in flesh, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in a different realm. See, you, 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 might, you might be looking at what I'm going through, but baby, I ain't where you think I'm at. You look at, you looking at my present situation, but I'm looking into another dimension. What I'm going through do not apply to where I'm going. Watch this now. He didn't know. He didn't know that it was something going on in the spiritual realm. Nebuchadnezzar didn't know. That there was something going on in the spiritual realm? Job didn't know that there was something going on in the spiritual realm. Joseph didn't know that there was something going on in the spiritual realm. You don't know that there's something going on in the spiritual realm. But there's something going on in the spiritual realm. And your haters going to be gravely disappointed. Those that are talking about you going to be gravely disappointed. Those who are counting you out going to be gravely disappointed. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, watch this now, were lodging in the spiritual realm with God. They were lodging in the spiritual realm with God. In other words, he didn't know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had sheltered in place in God. See, nobody don't know that you are sheltered in place because it's a covert operation. They don't see that, oh my God, all you see is what I'm going through, but you don't see the secret place that I'm in. You don't see it. That's why David said when my enemies come up against me and 
tried to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell because they didn't know that David was in the sh He sheltered in place. He sheltered in place. Let me tell you something you sheltered in place. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. The Holy Spirit blew my socks off. He said, he said about this sheltered in place stuff. Not only is it when you shift in place in God, not only is it a place where you celebrate God, but it's a place where God celebrates you. Oh my God. You didn't catch what I said here. Not only is it a place where you celebrate God, but it's a place where God celebrates you. God, God said, I celebrate with you. When you were sheltered in place, God said, I celebrate you. In other words, I'll put 24-7 surround the ground, around, around protection around you. You precious to God. And God said, I put angels. I entrusted angels. I put them all around your life because you're precious to me. I, put, I celebrate you. I, I ain't putting these angels in place just to be putting them in place. I celebrate your faith in me. I celebrate how you, you worship me. I celebrate how you honor me. I celebrate you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. When Stephen was being stoned to death, the Bible said when he looked up to heaven, he said he saw the son of man standing. And what he would do, he would celebrate. He said, look at my, look at my soldier. Look at my son. Look at him. Going through and telling them to forgive them for they know not what they do. You do know there's a special place in heaven for all the martyrs, right? So Stephen got a special place. He said, boy, when you come here, I got a special seat for you. He didn't know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had sheltered in place. Because I want you to understand what sheltered in place means, the phrase sheltered in place. What it means is to find a safe location indoors and staying there until you are given an all clear signal that everything is good. God said, man, I'm going to tell you right now, for us, the safe place is in God. And God said, when you go through your storm, only thing I need you to do is just stay there until I give you an all clear signal. Oh my God. Stay there until I give you an all clear signal. Let this storm pass by. And stay in here. Stay in me. Stay in me. What a storm is raging. Stay in me. And I'll give you an all clear signal when everything is gone. When everything is done. See, that what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they went in the fire. They thought they were being thrown in the fire, but God said they are in the secret place in God. And you just stay here, Shadrach. Me second a minute ago. Although it's a fire, I'm going to know your hair won't be singed, your clothes won't be smell like smoke. Just stay here until I give you an all clear signal to come on out of this thing. What am I saying here? I'm saying that you got the shelter in place, especially in the times that we're living in. Uh huh. Shelter in place. Stay in God. Regardless of what things are occurring around you, shelter in place. Stay in Him until He give you an all clear signal. Say, come on out of this thing. Come on. Come on out and smile. Come on. Come on and receive yours. Come on and get what I promise you. That's why the, that's why the enemy don't want you to walk in this universal principle. Because he know when you walk in this universal principle, it's a guaranteed promise from God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. When you're in that place, Jesus. you are operating in the universal principle that sets you up for the universal promise. He said, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, the universal promise is guaranteed to you. Because watch this now. It's guaranteed because you have to understand when you look at the literary composition. 
It's not an if or a maybe, but it's a must. Watch this now. God didn't say that it was an if or a maybe. The summons didn't say it was an if or a maybe, but he said it's a must. He said you shall. It's a must. Watch this now. And you got to understand something about the promises of God because the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God are yes and amen. Every promise is yes and amen. When you walk in that universal principle, God said yes. Yes. Yes, I'm going to protect you. Yes, I'm going to cover you. Yes and amen. I don't care if the economy is falling apart. Yes and amen. I don't care if you got laid off. Yes and amen. I don't care if your bank account is getting low. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. When you are living in Jesus Christ, all the promises of God are fulfilled. That's why you got to stay in Christ. That's why he said if you abide in me, ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. You just got to stay there. If the church people knew how important it is just to stay there. Instead of being tossed around with every storm, just stay there. Stand still. The storm ain't going to last always. See, that's what us grown folks know. The mature people know. That weeping may endure for a night, but joy don't come in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't going to do nothing stupid from this temporal situation because what you do stupid can have per per permanent consequences. Jesus Christ carries out all the promises of God. One translation said he carries out and fulfills all of God's promises, no matter how many of them they are. So I'm going to tell you, some of the child of God, you got benefits. I ain't going to let the devil rob me out of mine. The devil is like, as a child of God, I know I got benefits. So what you have to do is crack the book over and find you a promise and latch hold to it. No, no, no. The Bible said this promise is mine. The word says this promise is mine. You highlight every promise. And you hold fast to it. And when you are living in that secret place, when you are living in Jesus Christ, the universal promise is guaranteed. Because you've got to understand that that secret place, that promise provides hiding, covering, and protection. He said, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then I like what he says here because you've got to make this thing personal. See, I'm going to tell you something. I can want something for you, but you've got to want it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Man, there's plenty of things that I want for my people. I, I love you and I want the best for you. But you got to want it as bad as I want it for you. Mm -hmm. There are so many people, we can be on the outside, see the real potential that's in you. But until you recognize the potential for yourself, it's not going to be unlocked. He said, he said you got to make it perfect in verse number, in verse number two. He said, I will say, of the Lord, he is my refuge. Uh -huh. It ain't nothing that your daddy can say for you. It ain't nothing that your mama can say for you. It ain't nothing that your brother or sister can say for you. But you have to have your mind made up and recognize this for yourself. He is my refuge. Now, I don't know about you, but I already made him my refuge. You can stand out in the storm if you want to. But why, should I, why would I sit in the storm when there's a storm shelter? Why would I sit in the storm when I can shelter in place in God? I don't have to receive what you receive. 
You receive the sickness. You, you receive being broke. You receive not having anything. You receive that. But don't get mad with me because that is not my portion. My portion, as he said, he'll bless me exceedingly up, abundantly more than I can ask or think. My portion said that he'll take care of me even in the famine. We serve a God that will take care of you by supernatural means. Elijah, Elijah, sheltered in place when the famine came to Samaria. He was in the spiritual realm. He was lodging in the spiritual realm with God. That's why he didn't starve to death in the famine. It's because he knew the art of sheltering in place. And what we have to do as his people is learn the art of sheltering in place. If you walk in this universal principle, you will and you shall experience this universal promise. And a universal promise is guaranteed. It's not predicated on an if or a maybe. But it's a must. The Lord says, put me in, my, in remembrance of my word. And when you are righteous and you standing right with God, God said, I dare you to put me in remembrance of my word. The Bible said that Hezekiah was on his deathbed, but Hezekiah put God in remembrance of his word. He said, wait a minute now. This shouldn't be my portion. He said, wait a minute now. Lord, haven't I kept your statues in your way? And the Bible said Elijah, now Isaiah was on his way through the courtroom, and he had to turn around. And he said, you go tell Hezekiah that I'm going to add an extension to his life. Shelter in place. Standing all over this sanctuary.